Hey there, Dark Souls players, it's me again, Sunbro Sebastian. Today I'm bringing you the strategy for how to fight Ornstein and Smo, Mano and Mano, and El Baño. Now, newer players to the game usually tend to co-op their way through this, just because it is a little bit easier, but if you do decide that you want to solo them, you learn more about being good at this game from this singular fight than from any other fight or any other situation in the entire game from here on out. But for this fight, I'm so level 60, and my weapon of choice is Quailag's Fury Sword plus 4. So, why Quailag's Fury Sword and why plus 4? Well, Quailag's Fury Sword is actually a really easy weapon to get at this point in the game, and it does a ton of damage for this low of level. Not only that, but with enough hits, it can also stagger both Ornstein or Smo. Um, all you have to do to get Quailag's Fury Sword is you've already beaten Quailag and you already have her soul. All you have to do from there is take any curved sword, like any sort of scimitar, chopel, or kopesh, or even a katana up to plus 10 from Andre of Astora. Um, take it to the blacksmith here, and for one demon titanite, he'll turn into Quailag's Fury Sword. In fact, there's no excuse not to have this weapon by this point in the game, just because in this citadel, there is two demon titanites, so you should have it at at least plus one coming into this battle. So it's very easy to get and very effective probably until New Game Plus. As for my shield of choice, it's a Silver Knight Shield plus 5. You can actually farm it off the Silver Knights in here and get it up to plus 5. It's awesome in this fight because it has lightning resistance and the highest stability of a shield you can get at this point in the game. Um, all my other equipment is pretty standard and is about as powered up as you can get it at this point in the game. But anyway, let's get this fight on with and let's show you how this is done. Once you're on to the other side of the fog gate, you just want to get your shield up and get ready for Ornstein to either charge you or throw lightning. Once he's made his move, you just want to proceed up the left side of the room um, and dodge smoke he tries to attack you. Sometimes it doesn't come off that easy though, but that is what gets both of them in view, which is probably the most important part of the fight. Um, if you don't have a tactically sound position to attack from, all you have to do is move to another pillar, as the pillars actually provide cover for most of their attacks. Um, from there, you also learn how to stand stance, which is switch between one and two hands really quickly. And when attacking, you just want to do two hits and out. Uh, and the reason for that is because Ornstein is actually really good at blindsiding you during this fight. That he can also attack through smoke, which can also put you in a bad way. And I know I make this look easy, but trust me, this took tons of practice. As a newer player, the best piece of advice I can give you is to play a very conservative and very defensive game. Using the pillars as both the lines and cover, just simply because both Hornstein and Smoke cannot attack with them with both of their attacks. So it will give you a little bit of a respite and give you a chance to heal from behind them as well. But above all else, the most important thing is definitely to keep a frothy head during this fight. Just simply because this fight is incredibly fast paced and it's never the same fight twice. Especially with how much room Smoke takes up in Hornstein with his ability to flank you during the entire combat. Sometimes during the fight you can get really lucky and Ornstein will be nowhere near Smoke. At that point just feel free to light him up, but always save enough endurance to get out of there if you need to. Which is why I tend to stick with the two and out strategy. So in the question of against Ornstein and Smoke, do you go with poise or do you go with mobility? It's actually during this fight, if you solo it, um, you'll actually learn what playstyle does work best for you. It's during this fight that I actually learned that I like mobility better. I like having the fast roll and I like being able to recover from a roll quickly rather than relying on defensive poise and wondering what I'm going to do you know, once I actually do get to just like that. But with enough practice, patience, and persistence, you'll definitely be able to take one of them out eventually. For this, I've chosen Smo, and then you'll get this great cutscene of Smo beaching himself like a whale and then Ornstein coming along to snatch up his power. So for this playthrough I've chosen to go with Ornstein just because I love Ornstein's armor. Hyper Ornstein, once he takes Smo's power, grows to 50 feet tall and becomes nearly immune to all lightning. So Sumbro Lightning or any other lightning weapons you have at this point will do practically nothing. Some other things to note about Hyper Ornstein is that when you're in a range he'll throw lightning and unlike earlier in the fight he can actually hit you through the pillar so you definitely got to be careful about that. The strategy though is pretty basic for fighting Hyper Ornstein. You just want to get right up against his knees and start whacking away at his shins. Also, when his spear lights up, you want to dive forward when he dives back. Otherwise, you'll find yourself becoming a hero kebab at the end of his spear. 
Also, one of the main things to look out for, aside from when his spear lights up, is when he actually jumps up in the air. You actually want to start backing out, and then when he's on his way down, you want to dive all the way back as far as you can. Um, I can call this Attack of Thunder Fart. Um, it actually does about half your health, and you'll probably see it later on in this playthrough quite a bit um, when I miss time to dodge. Other than that, you um, just want to try and recover as quickly as possible and get right up against his shins um, he's whacking away. For this part of the fight, though, I tend to not focus too much on stance dancing. Um, I definitely don't recommend it for the new player or the person trying to learn this fight, as having your shield up can be a pretty handy um, thing, just depending on how you want to approach Ornstein. You can either block attacks or dodge them. Both of them are just about as effective. The only thing you can't block is when he throws lightning at you, when he does his thunder part, and his impaling lightning spear attack. It's these three attacks that'll do the most damage to you, so it's definitely a good idea to learn how to dodge them as opposed to block them. If you ever do need to heal up during the fight, though, you just get to a range, get about one to two between you and him. Uh, preferably to where he throws lightning at you and can't just jump over to you and arbitrarily hit you through a pillar. But after that, just S this up and get right back in the fight to where you're just whacking away at his shins. The second part of the Ornstein slow fight is definitely a lot slower paced and a lot easier to deal with than the first part of the fight. Um, definitely give you time to step back and take a look at their patterns and get used to them. The only thing that's really stressful or really much of a pain in the ass about the second part of the fight is that if you do mess up, you have to do the entire first part of the encounter all over again. But with some persistence and with some practice, you too can take down Hyper Ornstein or Hyper Smoke. And praise the sun! Other than that, this has been Sun Pro Sebastian bringing the strategy for how to fight Ornstein and Smoke with the Hyper Ornstein ending. Thanks for watching and catch you guys later.